What's up, kiddo? So sorry you're sick. Hope you're feeling better uh, by the time you, you watch this. Okay. Uh, I recorded this. Well, I told it six period I was recording as I went through the, the, the mini lesson. Uh, and they were all like, hey, hey, hey. Um, but I didn't actually hit record and that wasn't on purpose. I accidentally thought I was recording, went through the whole thing and then it turned out I didn't record. So, so you, 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 you get no shouts from your friends or buddies. Okay. Uh, instead you just get this after school special. Hope you enjoy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over with you today, uh, what you're doing this week. Uh, and this is pretty much what you're doing this week. Uh, all through Friday. You are taking your outline and you are going to mm, convert it into a paragraph. I'm trying to find the right one. Let's see. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. No, that's it. Okay. So this is your outline and start off with a blank outline and then you added in your title and your um, main ideas, your thesis, your umbrella topics with your main ideas and then added in claim and quotes from your primary source and quotes from your secondary sources. Good times. Good times. And ideally, you did this with uh, all of your paragraphs, your outline. So now what are you doing today, tomorrow, uh, once you submit your outline? Um, you are going to open up your outline that you've submitted. Um, and you're going to go to the different body paragraphs. And you're going to write your paragraph in the outline underneath the pair underneath your outline entry okay so um you're not i don't want you to worry about <clears throat> introductions and conclusions we're going to do introductions and conclusions on friday maybe thursday um so when we do that and you're not here i will do a little video for you about introductions and conclusions uh we write those last we, we want to go ahead and just get our body paragraphs taken care of so you go to your outline and you have your claim, like for example, this claim. While the women have been living as dolls in a toy house through their marriages, real life has been existing outside the whole time, just waiting for them to experience. That was a quick claim written, real, real quickly. Uh, then we have uh, sources. We have uh, quotes from the actual story. You don't have to have a quote from the actual story. You can have summary and references to the actual story. I have an actual quote because it was just easier uh, for what, what I was writing. Quote, trees that were all quiver with the new spring life. The delicious breath of rain was in the air. The notes of a distant song which someone was singing reached her faintly and countless sparrows were twittering in the eaves. Um, and then we have the secondary uh, quote. Uh, the spring outside symbolizes the birth of a new life, a life in, in this sense where Louise could live happily without any restraints of her matrimony. And I actually have another quote uh, that I did not uh, put in my outline that I added later. So I'll just go ahead and add that right uh, here. The world of men. Okay, so if I wrote this outline entry, now I will start trying to put this into a complete thought. Um, and I would uh, begin with some version of my claim, and then um, I would include that, and then I would explain in my paragraph uh, my main idea until I got to a, a place where I want to put in one of my quotes, either my primary quote or my secondary source quote, explain some more, and then put in my other quote, um, and then conclude it up. So for this example, uh, I'll read you this paragraph. This paragraph that I wrote, uh, it takes, it follows this order, claim, primary source, and then secondary source. Uh, actually, no, it's claim, 
secondary source, primary source quote, and then secondary source again. So um, here is this paragraph. While the women have been living as dolls in symbolic toy houses through their marriages, real life has been existing outside the whole time, just waiting for them to experience it. In Camus' reworking of Chopin's story, he takes the world outside of Janine's window and uses it to free her. Louise never gets to fully experience the freedom that awaits her outside of her window, but Janine does, and it is that natural world that escorts her to her epiphany. For Louise, her room represents the confined walls her society has built around her. It's Chopin's work that focuses on the confined conditions women experience in the turn of the 20th century. Much of what her female characters experience is in contrast to the greater insight into the world of men. And then I have my citation quote. That her, that her male characters are privileged to enjoy. Louise's bedroom, while a refuge for her while she lives in the home of her husband, still acts as a boundary that limits her access to, quote, trees that were all quiver with the new spring life. The delicious breath of rain was in the air. The notes of a distant song, which someone was singing, reached her family, and countless sparrows were twittering in the eaves. Chopin. I've inserted two quotes so far. A small little quote uh, from a secondary source, which comes from this source, and then a longer quote right here. Now, after you have a quote, you should kind of explain it. So here I have, this passage is charged with positive, connotative, and personified words. A quiver, a uh, new, delicious breath, twittering, and uh, presence of water in the form of rain, which is a baptismal elixir of rebirth and salvation. Um, Atmospheric and Kahirik, those are the writers of my research, discuss that, quote, the spring outside symbolizes the birth of a new life, a life in this sense where Louise could live happily without any restraints of her matrimony, end quote. But sadly, while all of these things are apparent and waiting for her to join them outside, she isn't able to ever get out to claim this freedom that has been promised to her. Her death comes as a stark reminder that the forces of the patriarchy are unrelenting. That ends my paragraph, okay? I have began with essentially the same claim. I rewrote it just a little bit. I integrated my two quotes, and I ended it with some explanation, okay? Um, here's another example uh, on, a, on a slightly shorter scale. This came from a student who is reading uh, Where the Crawdads Sing. Okay, her title is Childhood to Adulthood Trauma in Where the Crowd Where the Crawdads Sing. Her thesis for her paper is about how abandonment creates trauma in kids, which plays out as adults. Uh, her topic for this paragraph is the uh, inability to express emotions. Her claim is that kids from trauma or kids with trauma cannot express their feelings as, as adults but with here. Her primary example from the book is that Kaya, the main character, doesn't tell her boyfriend to stay when he goes to college. Her secondary quote comes from research by Donald Happery. It says, adult trauma survivors often find themselves in dissolving relationships due to their inability to trust their partners, which keeps them from expressing their feelings. So these are the things that we're going to weave into this paragraph. We begin with the claim. The claim written in the outline is not as... Please pardon this interruption. Oops. It is now 2.25. All students should be under the direct supervision of a teacher, coach, or club sponsor. Any student waiting for a ride should move immediately to the blue benches near the bus lane at the front of the school. And have a great day. Thanks, bud. Um, the claim is rewritten in the paragraph to be a little bit better, okay? Because that's the point. We're taking all this and we're formatting it into a paragraph that uh, is better communicated in our outline and is uh, more put together. Here we have. Children who experience trauma through the abandonment of their parents experience difficulties in their later lives as adults trying to express their emotions. Uh, actually, we should probably put Lynn Trout trying. 
Research by Donald Habery found that adult trauma survivors often find themselves in dissolving relationships due to their inability to trust their partners, which keeps them from expressing their feelings. End quote. This is evident in Kaya's relationship with, when, uh, with Don when he goes to college, and she is incapable of telling him how she feels about this. When many women from non-traumatic childhoods would be able to express their feelings of needing their partners to stay close, Kaya is like many of the traumatized youth who repress their emotions for self-preservation. This paragraph is shorter, but it does all the things that needs to be done. It has a claim, it has uh, references to the, the book and outside research, and it explains why you know this helps us to better understand the main character of Kaya. Because the point of the outside research is to help uh, you to better understand the, the main characters or the themes or why things happen the way they do in your book. Okay. All right. So this is your goal for this week is to take your outline and for uh, each of the body paragraphs, write a paragraph using the claim and uh, quotes that you have uh, created in your outline. Okay. So by Friday, you should try to have three of these. If you're not, I bet you're sick though, so maybe not, okay? All right, sorry, I hope you feel better. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can have your mother email me, or you can email me at the email address that she's using, because that's the one that I check. Alrighty? Okay, hope you feel better. Bye.